All right, hey guys, so uh, I've got something a little bit, just a quick one, but reasonably interesting. Um, so I picked up this little dual purpose ammeter slash voltmeter um, the other day on Amazon. I say the other day, bought it ages ago, but I've not got around to using it properly until now. Um, so yeah, it'll do uh, voltage and uh, it'll also measure current as well, um, up to about, I think it's rated to 10 amps. I've taken it out of its housing uh, but it comes with this little uh, little black sort of cowling that you can use to insert it into a project. This is a little uh, project box that I'm putting it into. Um, and it's got this little uh, like screen that goes over the top of it here. So you can see volts and amps. So great. Um, all seems, you know, seems to work fine. And uh, the only problem with it being that it's got fairly poor instructions, as in none. And I had to do a fair amount of Googling. Um, but basically, you know, the voltage is fairly easy. It's got a, a red line. It's got three wires. It's got red, obviously volts in or positive. Uh, black is ground, uh, and that'll, that you can just use that for the for the voltmeter. But to use to do current, what you do is you um, uh, it, this basically sits between ground and whatever you're powering. So you essentially take the if you're you know, driving a motor or something or some circuit, you take the ground from that and uh, feed it into this yellow wire and then effectively it, that circuit gets grounded through this ammeter um, and it will measure the current that's being consumed which is kind of neat I'm not tested how accurate it is but you know it does work and seems alright there is a problem with it however and that problem is that the LEDs on here are powered directly from the input voltage now at the moment I've got it hovering around 5 volts I'm using one of these little uh, cheapo buck converters um, to just demonstrate this. So if I um, turn up the voltage, it's fine. You know, I've got it up to like 12 volts here or 11. Um, then if I turn this back down again, the problem is that around under three volts, you can see that the the display starts to fade, and now it's totally unreadable. Um, you can just about read it, and then no, that's it. It, it, there's kind of a cutout voltage, which is not terribly helpful because you know this thing can do lower than three volts, obviously, but you just can't tell. Um, so it'd be nice if we could power the display, but um, separately, and uh, then, uh, but still display the right voltage. I've discovered a way that we can do this. Uh, I've not tried it yet, but I think the way, the way we can do this is you know it works. So we're looking around 10 volts here, so I'll make a note of that. Um, now, if we look on the back of this circuit, I'm not sure how well this will come out on the on the display here on the screen. Oh, it's not bad on the camera. Okay. Um, now, down here below, I've got a voltmeter, um, so I can demonstrate what I'm what I found by probing around in this thing. Let me turn this around so we can see easily. Okay. So what I noticed was that you seem to this little IC here. Uh, looks suspiciously like a voltage regulator and you've got the telltale capacitor here as well so you know maybe this is powering this chip which is ultimately you know it's, a, it's an unlabeled chip that's ultimately driving the whole thing some no-name chip um, now we've got a diode here as well so I thought okay well let's have a poke around here so if we look at the voltmeter uh, you guys probably can't quite read that but I'll tell you what it says we've got 9.7 volts so so really that's our input voltage that we saw we're running at you know um, 10 volts so if I stuff this in here directly into the voltage in I'm getting yeah 9.98 so it's basically I mean there's a little bit of loss but it, it, I guess that's over the diode if I put it on the other end of the diode I'm getting 9.98 yeah so 10 volts that's the input voltage uh, a little bit of drop over the diode but then uh, We've then got that being input into this, whatever this IC is. It is labelled, but I haven't looked it up. So if we look at that, we've got one leg is the 9.5 volts. And then we've got the middle leg, which is ground, 0 volts. And the other leg is 3 volts on the nose. Now, I've played with this. It's difficult to do on camera. I've only got you know, two hands. But that 
pin is three volts irrespective of the input voltage. So it's it's a voltage regulator, and I'm sure if we looked up this part, we'd see, which makes sense because you know what this thing needs three volts to power its LEDs and power its function, and lo and behold, below three volts, the display cuts off. What I think we can do is essentially drop the power directly onto this uh, the input side of this voltage regulator. If I constantly feed in you know, three or five or whatever volts into there, it should power the display even when the operating or the, measure, the voltage we're measuring is lower than three volts. So uh, I'll whip that up and, uh, and show you guys uh, whether or not that works in a second. Um, one thing I'm probably going to have to do is remove this diode because if I put, if I feed in three, let's say, I, for example, I might, I, I might decide to feed in five volts <clears throat> into this voltage regulator from my bench supply and just have that hooked up as an extra wire, essentially a five volt rail. If I then hook up my bench supply feeding 12 volts in as it's, you know, as the input voltage, five volts as the uh, voltage for this, uh, this IC, then what's going to happen is because this diode is still, if I leave this diode here, that 12 volts is going to effectively short with the 5 volt rail that I put in here. And it will cause, you know, my bench power supply is just a PSU that I've repurposed. It'll effectively short it out and it'll, um, it'll kill it, so or it'll shut down. So what I'll do is I'll desolder this diode, uh, solder a lead onto here uh, instead. And then we should be able to power the, um, power the circuit. Um, and if I do it on, you know, leave the voltage regulator in there, uh, then actually I can supply this with you know a range of voltages up you know for, up to whatever 12 volts uh, probably higher actually I don't know what the rating is for this thing but uh, certainly as high as my bench supply will go which is great so I'll uh, I'll do that and I'll bring you guys back to see whether or not it works all right guys so uh, I've made the modification what I'll do is I'll show you what I've done so you can see let me get my pointer. You can see in here, hopefully, um, I've lifted out the diode, and actually, um, <laughs> interestingly, underneath the diode, there was actually a silk screen that has a diode symbol, um, so you can see where it was. And uh, so I've lifted it out, and I've uh, I've soldered in very gently this uh, red lead wire here. Um, and I'll bring that up closer. Hopefully, you can see. Just soldered it onto the pad. Uh, now it's important to note that 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 pad is not a, like a, it's not a, it was for a surface mount component, so it's not through hole, so there's no holes like there are here, um, so it is just soldered directly onto a pad, um, so that will not be able to, it can't be load bearing in any way because it will just rip the pad straight off. So for that reason, what I've done is I've I was very careful. I shaped the wire before I soldered it, um, and I've laid the wire along here, uh, rooted it around the back, and then what I've done is uh, I've actually bent it round and then cable tied it to this relatively stiff bar here. I'm not sure what purpose this has for the circuit, but um, it's a rigid structure on the board. And, and I've, yeah, I've cable tied it as neatly as I can to there. Um, so that will then mean that, I, you know, if I pull on this wire, it's not going to put load on that pad uh, and should protect it somewhat. Uh, so does it work? Let's find out. I've got this hooked up as it was before, and uh, you can see the display isn't uh, live because I've got this uh, floating wire here, and I've taken out that diode, so the screen isn't the chip isn't powered. So let's just uh, plug it in now. Let's just attach that to the. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it with um, the 12 volts input that I have to the whole circuit. Uh, so it'll be 12 in, but it'll probably work from anywhere from three up. Right. Okay. So the screen's come live. You can see we're running at 9.44 volts on the uh, on the actual voltage input to this circuit. Uh, this wire I can tell you is at 12 volts. So <clears throat> to just to power the display, that will be being uh, converted by the the um, voltage regulator. Right. So now let's try reducing the voltage again. So reduce that down. Six, five, four. Three, two, here we go. So we're now down to 1.28, 1 1.27 volts. So we can see that this, the display is still live despite the fact that this is now a much lower voltage. So we can we can track it all the way through. 
which is great. And you can see there on the actual um, buck converter, the LED dies um, because it's, you know it's operating at too low voltage. So now when we turn it back up again, we go all the way back up and it still works. Go all the way back down. And go all the way down. So that works very nicely. Um, hopefully that's useful, guys. Uh, it's going to prove useful for me. Um, just makes something that's a cheap little component uh, a little bit more useful uh, in real world. All right. Thanks.